Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. And if you're new here, welcome to my channel. My name is Marina. I'm a certified lash tech based in Toronto, Canada, and I like making lash extension videos. And today we are going to be focusing on the topic of tweezer sterilization, the importance of sterilizing them. And then I am going to show you guys how I sterilize my tweezers and the process that I go through to make sure that I am being very sanitary and very clean when it comes to my tools and my tweezers. Now, I wanted to kind of touch upon the importance of sterilizing your tweezers properly. I mean, you are going in with these tweezers in your client's eyes. It is so important to make sure that you are, are being safe about lash extensions. And because people can easily get bacterial infections, on their eyes, it's so easy tra to transmit that bacteria from one client to another. And at the end of the day, you're gonna be liable for giving an infection to somebody else. Now, I mean, we do have consent forms, so, you know, it might not have to go as intense uh, into like suing or anything like that, but the damage is already done and that damage is gonna be on your brand reputation and the reputation for yourself as a lash tech. So I'm going to show you guys my process and I'm not going to, you know, keep this intro too long. So let's hop into it and let me show you guys what I do and step by step of how I sterilize and what solution I am using to sterilize my tweezers. So let's get to it. Okay, so the first thing that I do is gather all of my tweezers in this cute little box that I got from Amazon. Now I used to sterilize my tweezers using this container, however I can't soak my entire tweezer inside of my sterilization liquid because it will peel the paint off. So I instead I put them in these little jars and only soak the tip of my tweezers so that I can protect the paint and it still looks aesthetically pleasing. So I use Preempt as my sterilization liquid. It is 3.78 liters. I like to use Preempt because it is medical grade rather than just salon grade. I'm not too sure what the exact scientific difference between the two are, but during my training, this is the one that I was shown. So I also like this one because when it matches with water, it neutralizes the solution, making it more eco-friendly when you put it down the drain. You have to change the solution every two weeks so you want to be on top of that because after two weeks it doesn't uh, work as well so as you can see i'm just pouring it into these little jars here and i only put enough in so that the tip of the tweezer will be meeting the liquid you don't want to put too much or else you're gonna peel the paint off so one thing i would say is to be careful about getting this on your skin wash it off immediately i um had the mistake of leaving it a little bit on my skin for too long and it kind of burns your skin so just be very careful when working with that liquid so now i'm just removing my tweezers out of the container and i have this old toothbrush not old not used but i get them all the time from my dentist so i thought okay why not use one of them for a scrubby brush so i kind of skipped recording this part but i always wash my hands obviously before i'm going in to wash my tweezers I usually do this in my sink, so I'm just using dish soap. I like to use hot water and soap just to do my initial first cleaning. You really want to make sure that your tools are super clean. So as you can see here, I'm, I usually don't scrub more than three at a time. So obviously you want to be more most efficient with this, but also being careful. So I would, I would say not to grab more than three tweezers. I really try to get the heads of the tweezers because that's obviously where the most contact is when you are lashing. So you want to get up a little bit on the head, but um, I try to kind of focus more on the tip. So one thing you need to be careful of also is drying your tweezers as well. And I will show you the process in a few minutes, but here I am just washing all of my tweezers, really scrubbing them and really getting into the head of the tweezers. Something that I like to focus on is grabbing tweezers that are kind of the same shape so it makes it easier for me to scrub i don't know if that's just me being weird but that's just something that i try to do when i'm washing my tweezers 
the ones that are similar are kind of easier to just brush and really get in there and to make sure that you are kind of hitting all the sweet spots of where to wash and I have a lot of tweezers as you can see so this process took a little bit okay so now I am drying drying is actually extremely important in this process I have made the mistake of keeping a few water driplets or droplets sorry on the tweezer and basically what happens is like i said before water neutralizes this liquid or this sterilization liquid preempt if you will um and basically what happens is because it neutralizes it you'll notice these little crystals that start to form within your preempt and I think that's just it neutralizing. I'm not exactly sure the scientific and chemical reaction that is happening there, but that's basically when it's starting to neutralize and it's not as strong and not as um, efficient as you want it to be. Because obviously if you have the sterilization liquid, you want it to be as strong and powerful as possible. So you have to really make sure that you get every single water drop out of your tweezers. And that's why I even go in between the tweezers like I'm doing here. Now, yes, it is tedious, but honestly, guys, you need to do this part because any type of water that comes into contact with the preempt will uh, ruin the solution. So I like to keep all of my metal tweezers with no paint in one jar and I just kind of organize it that way. Um, I think I do this just because like, if I do put in a little bit more liquid in this big jar here, even if the liquid goes a little bit up, it won't peel the paint off. But as you can see in this other jar, these are all of the ones that have a painted coat. So I have to be careful and that is why the jar is smaller. This is an example of what can happen. I used to have paint all the way down to the head of the tweezer but now it all peeled off because I made a mistake and I did not know that I had to make sure that the preempt doesn't touch <laughs> the paint part. Okay so now you're going to set your timer to 20 minutes. 20 minutes is usually the sweet spot of letting the tools sterilize. After sterilization is done, I just grab a handful of my tweezers and just rinse the preempt off. This is fairly quick and shouldn't take too long. After that, I'm going ahead and drying all of them. Again, I am very thorough with the drying process. I'm not too sure if water, you know, affects it at all, but I like to make sure that it is dry and clean because I really do not want to ruin my tweezers or affect the longevity of my tweezers. So after, you can use acetone to remove any glue if there is glue on your tweezers, but most of the time I like to just keep my acetone next to my cart and if I do feel like the pickup is not as good then I'll go ahead and use a cotton ball and take off some of the extra glue using the acetone. So you can use this while you're lashing as well. I'm just now putting all of my tweezers away into my case. I always make sure that there's a protective rubber case for the tip of the tweezer and I organize my tweezers from painted to metal to isolation tweezers that are only metal to isolation tweezers that have paint now i'm just organizing like this just because i'm just kind of weird that way i like my tweezers to be highly organized and i like to keep all of them in similar um what do you call it similar cases just because i don't want to be disorganized and if i'm looking for a specific tweezer i know where to find it i have them in metal and painted and sometimes I prefer one over the other. So this is me just organizing. So neat, so satisfying. And those are my cases. Well guys, that concludes this week's video on sterilizing your tweezers. And I hope that you guys were able to take something away from this video. Hopefully I was able to help in some type of way, but I just wanted to get to show you guys the solutions that I use and why I clean the tweezers the way I do and why I think it's important. So thank you guys so much for watching. 
One thing I do want to ask is if you guys have any suggestions for new video ideas, please leave them in the comment section down below. I'm trying to be more engaging and maybe put in a little bit more effort because I know that sometimes the time lapse videos, or sorry, the time lapse videos aren't as interesting as uh, talking videos when I'm in front of the camera. Usually the ones where I'm talking in front of the camera do slightly better anyway. So if there's any topic that you guys want me to touch upon, even if it is with the la time lapse videos and doing my voiceovers, is there, if there's a specific topic, please leave a comment in the comment section down below so I can make videos that can help in some type of way. So thank you, thank you, thank you. I will hopefully see you guys next week. I hope you guys were able to learn something from this video and I hope that you guys are able to apply it to your lash tech journey. I will see you guys next week. I post every Sunday around 6.15. If this video was helpful, please give it a thumbs up. And again, please leave a comment in the comment section down below on video ideas because I'm trying to make new and improved videos. So bye guys. I will see you.